Welcome back everybody to another Nia Reincarnation video. Um, guys, on my first video when I created it, it was 55 minutes long, so I don't blame a lot of people, but there was one section of that video that I did mention, do not skip the storyline. This is one of the best stories told uh, so far up to date that I've ever played, and Square Enix are, are masterful at creating uh, tales about characters and making you feel something for these characters, and this game has done exactly that. So what I want to do, guys, for the first time ever is create a reaction video. Um, I'm going to cover chapters 1, 2, and I'm, I'm on chapter 3 now. Uh, and I can tell you now, difficulty level has skyrocketed. So I'm, I'm free to play here. I haven't, uh, I've only summoned uh, whatever they gave us for free. I do have 9,000 saves, so I'll be doing a summon video after this. But I did want to go over the library and kind of go over the cutscenes uh, in the chapter. So if you have skipped a storyline, this is your opportunity to rewatch them with me. Uh, with my reactions and I can tell you now um, if you are skipping the story I highly recommend you go back into the library section here once you unlock it and you re-watch all three of these um, yeah I mean like absolutely gorgeous storytelling like to the point where it's like uh, it makes you feel something right like and the cool thing about this game so far has been that every character that you you uh, get from the beginning the story is about them, so it kind of makes you fall for the characters even more uh, and what they're all about and gives you an idea of um, the things they bring to the world, right? So even though you pull a four-star character or a three-star character, you, you still may want to use your two-star characters and enhance them because the story currently is about them, right? So we're going to start off with his, his body and the rest. Um, if you have not seen uh, this storyline yet, I highly recommend you do so. I'm going to do a recall real quick on it, just so you guys can kind of see what it's about, and then I'm going to give you my reactions. Uh, I can tell you now, Chapter 3 is a prelude to Chapter 1, as is Chapter 2 is a prelude to Chapter 1. So, first off, you start off, His Body Rush, Showdown in the Wastes, alright? And this, and I will tell you this right away, what's happening here will make a lot more sense as you progress through the story. Chapter 2 does a fantastic job of explaining uh, the Bounty Hunter story, and Chapter 3 does an amazing job explaining these two. A young boy of good upbringing moves across a vast wasteland. You will be attached, I promise. A taciturn man follows. The boy proceeds uneasily, his eyes constantly probing their surroundings. Almost as if he fears they are being followed. And that right there, guys, that, that sentence right there is so key. And it makes you wonder, like, what are these two doing here? Who are they? Um, you know, what, what brought them together? Why are they in a western town? Like, what, what, what's up with these cowboys and stuff? It's, a, it's, it's such a compelling story. So keep watching, guys. The two make for a nearby eatery, hoping to shake the road from their weary thoughts. But instead of welcome, they find a group of bounty hunters gathered at their destination. The lead hunter stares at the child, appraising him. You royalty, boy? His voice is wrath. The boy remains silent, his head hanging low. You start to really feel for, uh, for the boy Perhaps once you understand his story. Response. Bounty hunter suddenly draws his gun. Two shots ring out and fade into the dusk. Like, what a way to start a storyline. Did you see the flock of black birds that possessed the bounty hunter? They're nasty sorts who like to fly in and warp the storm. Well, we are not going to let that stand. So this right here, when Mama explains to you what the blackbirds do, is your first purpose in the game is to stop these blackbirds from altering the storyline. Um, so that, there you go. You're also to defeat them and put the story back to the way it's supposed to be. Now, the crazy thing about it is, even if you do put the story back to the way it's supposed to be, there's so much heartache in the story. Like, like that right there, what just happened... Sorry, I'm just waiting for this part to finish. What just happened with that whole bounty hunter killing them is almost mercy to what's to come. It really is. And it's it's crazy to say that, right? To see somebody die. To say that it's almost merciful to have that have been just the ending. But you'll see what I'm talking about. 
So that would have been a battle right there. If you want to check out the battle, you can watch it on my first video, by the way. I am Wang, replies the boy. But remember, I am no longer a prince. So you instantly know now there is some royalty lineage there, and something happened, obviously, from him to turn for his royalty and become just a regular person. He proposes they take their leave of the town. The man silently nods and gazes upon the boy's face. Like, if that doesn't make you interested in the story, I honestly don't know what will. Because there is so there are so many layers that you need to peel to understand this story, right? And every chapter you complete with the main character opens up history of each each other character that you currently have, right? So there's the first recall, guys. This is story two now. I'm not gonna bother reading it. I actually wanna cut do the cutscenes with you guys, okay? His body rust, the prosthetic woman. So his body rust is the actual first storyline. Stories from the heart. But saloons have a special ability to loosen even the tightest of nerves. Such rumors are what brings the woman with the mechanical arm and leg to this place. And her story is no less tragic than the boy and the man, okay? I'm telling you now, like you'll see on chapter two. Several bounty hunters have been fallen under attack lately. You're a bounty hunter too, yeah? You take care out there. All right, so I'm going to read this part to you guys. Again, if you miss the story, you're missing out a major part here. My husband said a strange man shot at him in the woods. Fortunately, he didn't pursue, but still, it's left us shaken. You know, as a youth, I was quite the gunman myself. Folks used to say I was even better than a machine soldier. So that there is, a, is foreshadowing for what to expect in the forest. So now the question is, why is she targeting someone specifically, right? And you can kind of tell who it's, who she's after. A lone bounty hunter blocks the woman's path. His breath is ragged and foul. His eyes a pair of tiny beads. Give me all your money, he howls. And they've done a really good job making this a, a very Wild West feel because obviously it is, right? And in the Wild West, there was no laws, there was no rules. People robbed each other, killed each other, just a drop of a hat. So they've uh, they've done a really good job creating that atmosphere in such a short period of time in a Western in a Western setting. Uh, you know, the sun, obviously, the, the sand, the hay, the, the characters. It just fits so well. So clearly we understand the woman is out for revenge, like hardcore revenge. We, again, you don't know why yet till the next chapter. We'll do chapter two together as well too. And I'm telling you now, like that chapter two starts, like the end of this see, uh, series, like the first chapter is pretty heartbreaking already, but it kind of leaves you uh, wondering what happened. Like why are these characters in the situation they're in? And chapter two begins to explain a lot of the char the first characters, the woman's character specifically, and where she is and why she's got a prosthetic leg and arm, etc. Right? Uh, so yeah, again, it was um, you know, just watching this over and over again, uh, and I've actually done this a few times just to just to kind of see all the all the the foreshadowing, you know, the way they've structured everything. It's just such good storytelling, guys. So again, please, please, please do yourself a favor. Do not miss the story. This is worth it. It's it's so it's so grand, it's so well put together. His body rusts the gunslinger. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to the gunslinger. In a forest, near a ruined church. So remember there was a bounty hunter being shot at by somebody in a forest, right? Now, I don't know whether these apples were created with the red under 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 them as a signification for blood, 
uh, or if they were just you know to spill a little bit of color to give this bleak world some some red but either way like they're symbolic to some extent anyways the grasses rustle ominously as they part it seems the man is not the only one in search of food the animals in this place are lean starving desperate and they will do what they must to survive so this would be another battle here, guys. Um, and it's sad, like that last part there, saying that the animals are also starving, bleak, etc. Right? Like, it's it, it kind of gives you uh, a feel of desperation for both the the gunslinger and the bear. Uh, no one really being an enemy, but obviously the blackbirds kicking in forces you to battle the bear. You know, and you you return with those apples. Having secured his prize, the man returns. To Now, we don't know how long they've been here for, right? And they being the boy and, and the gunslinger. Um, and what the fate of the boy the is. Of his worn boot heels echoes throughout the dilapidated chapel. A boy lies at the back, his face drawn and haggard. The man kneels down and offers some of the food he collected. Boy is too weak to hold it. Like how sad is that, man? That's messed. Like His that is so messed up. You know what's crazy about that? Like, everything they just explained with words. You don't even get to see the expression on the characters. It's just a complete black outline with a few different colors signifying the hair, the clothes, some of the accessories. But the words are so deep that you can actually see the expressions on these characters without actually seeing them. That is amazing storytelling. And this is kind of why I became a writer, right? Like, I've written a book myself. Uh, it's a fiction book and and from my experiences playing square enix squaresoft games specifically guys I've learned the ability to To story tell really well because of the stories I've been reading and watching and this is by far one of the best gotcha game stories I've ever played um, I, I can't say more than that. So here we go. Let's go. Let's do chapter four now All right, so Journey's End, again, his body, Rust, Journey's End. So the woman who set out from town finally arrives at a wild wood. Soon, she comes across the ruins of a once proud church. The ceiling is collapsed. The walls are mere suggestions. And this is crazy because, like, you don't know the time frame between when we saw the gunslinger story where the boy just, you know, stopped taking the apple and couldn't, could, it was weak, versus when she actually arrived because the church no longer even exists anymore. It's completely, completely done, right? So I wonder what the time frame, and I hope they do explain that because that's, that's a pretty big uh, part of the story I find. It's when she arrived versus when they arrived. She finds a deteriorating clockwork. Look at this. Like dead boy right there. As well as the corpse like boy. that's crazy. To to become a corpse, it takes you know a long time. The clockwork soldier suddenly rises. And he has been guarding him nonstop. Like has not moved from his side. And you know now he wasn't really a man. He's he's a clockwork soldier. He's a mechanical being, right? All that rage. Like normally machines don't feel anything, right? In this case, they've given the gunslinger a personality. Uh, they've given him a purpose, a will almost. Like so, that's something that's super important to to note. Um, you know, he's been programmed probably to do a certain thing, and it wasn't this. But he seems to have chosen this as a life. The woman accesses the logs of the fallen soldier. Boy was a prince, driven from his kingdom. The clockwork soldier traveling with him was his guardian and his friend. But alas, 
boy's disease worsened, and he perished. Now alone, the man remained behind and continued to safeguard his charge, killing any who dared approach the body. For a hundred years, the man stood watching. There you go, one hundred years, guys. Yo, all I gotta say again is if you don't feel anything after that, those words, the story, you're playing the wrong game. So there you have it, guys. Chapter one complete. If you missed chapter one, you skipped it, and you have the library open, and you watch this video. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, if you guys are loving this game as much as I am, let me know in the comment section. If you're enjoying the content, let me know. I'm going to be doing a summon video very soon uh, for the free uh, free to play gems that I've been collecting all along. Um, I, honestly, guys, to this point, I can't even explain how much I'm enjoying this game. Like it's it's gone to the point where like I don't even want to play anything else. I will still be playing PGR. Uh, I'll still be playing other games as well too because they take a little bit of time. This is the game I'm fully immersed in right now, uh, and I, I cannot stop playing it because the story is so gripping. Uh, so I will be doing a second uh, chapter review as well with you guys and some reaction videos. But I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, let me know, and we'll continue doing these through every chapter. And hopefully uh, this game has been as blessed for you as it has been for me because it's been taking up my time, and I've actually been enjoying it as a content creator, not feeling like I have to do this. So. Uh, this is Payne. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. We'll see chapter two and the summon video very shortly. Have a good one.